good morning and welcome to you on this Friday the 14th of August 2020 and today the Church of England has asked us to remember Maximilian Kolb who was a friar and a martyr so before we begin our worship together this morning a little bit about him so he was born at Zudgenska which is a uh, near Kloldenz in Poland in 1894 and his parents were Franciscan territories, tertiaries rather, and beginning his training for ordination in 1907 he joined the Franciscan novitiate in 1910. He studied at Rome but suffering from tuberculosis he returned to Poland and became a lecturer in church history. After suffering a severe illness, he resolved to publish a magazine for Christian readers, and this soon gained a huge circulation. Soon his community was producing daily and weekly journals. After the Nazi invasion of Poland, Maximilian was arrested as an intellectual and taken to Auschwitz in May 1941. There he continued his priestly ministry secretly celebrating the Eucharist when, after an escape, a prisoner was chosen to forfeit his life as an example, Maximilian stepped forward to take his place and be put to death. Two weeks later, he was injected with fennel and died on this day in 1941. So today we've been asked to remember him. So as we gather together for worship, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. <clears throat> o come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah on that day as Mashash in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our appointed psalm today is Psalm 51. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. I have been wicked even from my birth, a sinner when my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth deep within me and shall make me understand wisdom in the depths of my heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. 
Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. You take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken heart, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. O be favourable and gracious to Zion, Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will accept sacrifices offered in righteousness, the burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer up bulls on your altar. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Take away, good Lord, the sin that corrupts us. Give us the sorrow that heals and the joy that praises. And restore by grace your own image within us that we may take our place among your people in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And our reading continues today with 1 Samuel, and it's chapter 22, verse 6, all the way through to the end. Saul heard, that David and those who were with him had been located. Saul was sitting at Gilbeck under the tamarisk tree on the height, with his spear in his hand and all his servants were standing around him. Saul said to his servants who stood around him, Here now, you Benjaminites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why all of you have conspired against me? No one discloses to me what my son makes a league with the son of Jesse. None of you is sorry for me or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as he is doing today. Doag, the Edomite, who was in charge of Saul's servants, answered, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, in, to Alakmach, son of Atub. He inquired of the Lord for him gave him provisions, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. The king sent for the priest Amalalak, son of Atub, and for his father's house, the priests who were at Nob, and all of them came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Atub. He answered, Here I am, my lord. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, by giving him bread and a sword and by inquiring of God for him? so that he has risen against me to lie in wait as he is doing today. Then Amalalak answered the king, Who among all of your servants is so faithful as David? He is the king's son-in-law and is quick to do your bidding and is honoured in your house. Is today the first time that I have inquired of God for him? By no means. Do not let the king impute anything to his servant or to any other member of his father's house. For your servant has known nothing of all this, much or little. The king said, You shall surely die, Amalalak, you and all your father's house. The king said to the guard who stood around him, <clears throat> Turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. They knew that he fled and did not disclose it to me. But it, the servants of the Lord would not raise a hand to attack the priests of the Lord, then the king said to Doag, You, Doag, turn and attack the priests. Doag the Edomite turned and attacked the priests. On that day he killed 85 who wore the linen ephod. Noab, the sin of the priests, he put to the sword. Men, women, children and infants, oxen, donkeys and sheep, he put to the sword. But one of the sons of Amalalak, son of Atub, named Abithar, escaped and fled after David. Abathar told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. David said to Abathar, I knew on that day, when Doag the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I am responsible for the lives of all your father's house. Stay with me and do not be afraid, for the one who seeks my life seeks your life. 
you will be safe with me. This is the word of the Lord. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Our second reading this morning is taken from Acts, and it's chapter 2, and it's verses 37 to the end. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one in you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. Everyone from the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as they had need. Day by day as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And now for the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come together this morning, we pray for the day that lies ahead. Where, wherever we may be and whatever we may be doing, 
we pray that you walk with us, go before us and support us. If we may be stuck for words in a conversation, we pray that you will provide those words. May this be an opportunity to deepen our relationship with you, O Lord, to grow in faith, and to discern your will in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And at this time, for many it's a time of harvest, we pray particularly today for our farmers, giving thanks for the rain of the last day or so, for all those who work picking our fruit, Here locally, all the strawberry fields and strawberry farms, the vineyards, the orchards. There are so many apples, pears, plums, cherries are growing. We give thanks for all those who process our food, for those who pack them, for those who deliver them to our shops, supermarkets and markets, who work tirelessly behind the scenes. And we remain mindful of those farmers who perhaps haven't got enough helpers or workers who are anxious about their fruit on the trees. For all those who continue to work in our supermarkets, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray, not just for our farmers, but also those who work, our fishermen and fisherwomen, those who are out on the trawlers. We pray for them today. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who at this time are struggling in body, mind or spirit. For those known to us who today are feeling unwell. For those who may be struggling either with their physical health or their mental health. For those who continue to struggle with this virus. We pray particularly for those places where there might not be a sufficient health care system to support them. For so many communities around the world who are struggling to contain it. We lift them to you, O Lord, and in a moment of quiet, any places that are on our hearts, we lift to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our church, Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, for Joe, our area dean, and for all those lay and ordained who minister across our benefice. Pray for our congregations of St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter's our wider community and wherever you may be this morning we just pray for your local church community and for all those who minister Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and we pray for all those who've gone before us for those who have lost loved ones, for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, and for those who are preparing for funerals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those students who had their A-level results and BTEC results yesterday, for those who may well be celebrating that they've got opportunities 
in September. But we pray for those who may have been disappointed that the grades weren't, particular, weren't what they needed. And we pray for wisdom for next steps. So in a moment of quiet, we name any young people known to us who might be struggling as to what to do following their results. Heavenly Father, we just lift all of this to you. Accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for today. Almighty God, who sent your, Son, your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless us, and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, and all of those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Just have a moment with the birds, bird song. It's lovely we can hear some children playing in the background there as well, which is lovely. Um, whatever you do, do keep safe, keep well, keep praying and keep connected. And do join us for our services this Sunday. So we've got, uh, we're at St Peter's Church, uh, where we have got our first Eucharist there at 9.30 on Sunday morning. And here on Facebook Live, my colleague um, John Morrison will be leading us with matins. So please do join Facebook Live at 10 o'clock, which will be as ever updated onto YouTube. Um, meanwhile, John will be taking, uh, leading us with night prayer this evening at uh, six o'clock. So six o'clock for Compline, um, nine thirty at St Peter's the Church, um, or ten o'clock for Matins again led by John. So goodbye for now. Otherwise, I'll see you for morning prayer next Monday. Bye bye for now. Have a good weekend. Bye.